Okay, Gaia's Might. Single green instant domain. Target creature gets plus one plus one, one until end of turn for each basic land type among lands you control. Hypothetically, some kind of payoff for domain aggro that you can turn this into single green plus five plus five. Uh, I don't know that that's like super appealing. Mm. Lenore Stalker, single green one one creature elf warrior. Whenever another in creature enters the battlefield under your control, and or Stalker gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. I'm assuming we don't have that many ways to put two creatures into play on the same turn. Which mostly just makes this worse than a Savannah Lions, and I don't think I'm super excited for a Savannah Lions. This hypothetically would have been interesting with Chariot. <laughs> yeah, we have the one white creature that's a raise the alarm, I guess. Uh, hypothetically, the Cabaretti had a lot of cards in Naya that rewarded us for going wide. Join the dance is still legal. I don't know that I see other reasons to really get rewarded for that enough to be worth playing Lana or Stalker. And if you're playing Cabaretti as a color combo, then you wind up, like, not having super efficient access to turn one untapped green anyway. Mm. Ooh! I don't think this card's good. I haven't read it, but it's got Lyra in the art. I miss playing Lyra as my, like... <sighs> Once upon a time... I had a sideboard against aggressive decks in Jeskai Control. It was just three copies of Lyra and two copies of Shalai and two copies of Shieldmare. Those were the days. Lyra is a fun magic card. I somehow doubt that we're going to get a reprint of it in this set, considering we already read through white. Anyway, what does this card do? Single green instant kicker two and a green target creature you control gets plus two plus two until end of turn. If the spell was kicked, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Oh, that's actually pretty good and limited, huh? I mean, both halves of this are pretty interesting. I guess that's why it's an uncommon. But, yeah. Yeah, definitely not a constructed card, but a pretty cool limited card. Bite down, interesting common. One in a green for an instant target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker you don't control. Uh, have we ever had instant speed two mana punch before? I don't think we have. We have. Okay. Plenty of times. I'm going to go with twice. Is twice plenty of times? But Master's Rebuke is definitely this card. Did you skip over Tail Sweep? Did I? I don't know. What does this card do? It looked like a one-mana green card, so I assumed it wasn't playable. Tail Swipe. Single green instant. Choose target creature you control and target creature you don't control. If you cast the spell during your main phase, the creature you control gets plus one, plus one until end of turn, then those creatures fight each other. Uh, yeah? Okay. I mean, that is potentially interesting. I'm sure there are people who want to play green creatures who are interested in this card. Instant speed fight for one mana is close-ish to playable, and slight bit of flexibility in that if you sorcery speed it, it also gives plus one plus one. That's... yeah, all right. If, if somebody who plays green tells me that this card interests them, I believe that they believe that, and I also believe I believe they might not be wrong. I also believe that I probably ought to believe that they might not necessarily be correct, but... I definitely lack the experience to have any clue what I'm saying. In many ways. But that's always the case, and yet you're all here watching anyway, so I guess it's nothing new. What else do we have that's playable? Leaf Crown Visionary. 
Leaf Crown Visionary. Green, green. For a 1-1 one, one creature, Elf Druid, other elves you control, get plus one, plus one. Whenever you cast an elf spell, you may pay green if you do draw a card. I'm sure that's probably pretty good in formats where elves exist. How many formats do elves exist in? Like, modern and older? Modern and legacy? Historic? Uh, I guess elves kind of exists in historic, sort of. It's definitely possibly accurate. Well, good luck to the people who decide to play elves. They need it. This might actually be good for them. Reasonably. Don't think that we have any reason to believe that it's too likely to be useful in standard. Lanowar Loam Speaker, one in a green for a 1-3 creature elf druid. Tap to add one man of any color. Tap target land you control becomes a 3-3 elemental creature with haste until end of turn. It's still a land. Activate only as a sorcery. Uh, for a second there, up until that very last sentence, I almost thought that was really interesting. So, two mana, one, three is not, like, deeply embarrassing as far as not dying to s some stuff goes for your mana dork. But mostly this just seems probably a fair bit worse than Paradise Druid. It does die to cut down. That's pretty true. Also dies to strangle. Kind of doesn't not die to basically anything other than shock. Unsure what to feel about that. But it exists. If you're really desperate for a card that's not quite Paradise Druid, it's there for you. Nishoba Brawler. One in a green for a star three creature cat warrior with trample. Domain, Nishoba Brawler's power is equal to the number of basic land types among lands you control. So this is the closest thing we've got to a domain aggro payoff that's really worth calling it that. I mean, you have to somehow play a two-drop on turn two in a deck that is incentivized to play triomes. But... I mean, I guess turn one triome into turn two portal casts this as a four or three. Yeah, ultimately, Domain is an interesting subject to think about, but the end result is, I feel like, generally saying you, yeah, your mana base just doesn't support being aggressive. Best case scenario, this card's excellent. Average case scenario, of the deck that this card is in, I am much more deeply skeptical but hypothetically survives cutdown. Hypothetically survives cutdown. Probably should have cost one mana if they really wanted to make it playable. Or zero. That would have made it playable, probably. Quirion Beast Caller. One in a green for a 2-2 creature dryad warrior. Green just has a lot of two drops. How surprising. Creature Dryad Warrior. Whenever you cast a creature spell, put a plus one plus one counter on Query and Beast Caller. When Query and Beast Caller dies, distribute X plus one plus one counters among any number of target creatures you control, where X is the number of plus one plus one counters on Query and Beast Caller. That's not awful. It's mostly not good, I don't think. I mean, I guess if he curve into a three drop. This feels like it wants you to play almost somehow, I guess on turn two, another Beast Caller and another One Drop, and also maybe some spells that put plus one plus one counters on it from other sources, and then it probably begins to be interesting. Playing this fairly by like curving out two drop, three drop, four drop does not make this look appealing. Hmm. See, I feel like chat's trying to bait me into saying things that aren't real magic cards. But maybe I'm just being too skeptical. <laughs> maybe I have been burned before. Uh, what else do we got? This is an uncommon with a bunch of text. We'll read it. Tear Asunder. One in a green instant. Kicker, one in a black. Exile target artifact or enchantment. If this spell was kicked, exile target non-land permanent instead. Huh. So, naturalize with upside, or just instant speed, exile-y, thing? 
Huh. Are there any squirrel cards in the set? I don't know. Presumably, I know a Johnny gets a Planeswalker in this set, and I know they actually have a habit of hiding squirrels in the art for a Johnny cards. I don't know whether there's a hidden squirrel in the Ajani art. But as far as, like, tribal squirrels payoffs go, I I don't think so, but we're in green now, so potentially. Yeah, this card's really interesting. Like, I don't think you ever want to play a four-mana exile any kind of permanent card, even if it's instant speed, but the flexibility of, like, if you want to have a naturalize in your sideboard, this is... A pretty cool naturalized to have access to. Binding of the Old Gods was okay. This is instant, which is a lot more than binding. And again, the fact that occasionally you can cast it for two mana seems like where you can potentially pick up some edge. I feel like the majority of this card's value is if you want to do something... If you really need to have something exiled, I guess. So like, um... Black white playing uh not Edgar Edgar? Yeah, it is Edgar. Uh the four mana Edgar that when it dies flips into an artifact and then keeps coming back forever. This card seems very good against that. It's also the two mana exile on wedding announcement is really interesting. So, like, hypothetically, this is a deeply not embarrassing card to play against a lot of the white-black sacrifice-style decks. Am I happy if this just hits Fable? No. No, I don't think so. I wouldn't necessarily bring it in against just that. Does this C play while we have Trap Finder? Yeah, I think so. I mean, like, specifically against the white-black sacrifice deck? Liberator hitting Wedding Announcement is cool, and isn't a card that I think is, like, completely worth avoiding, but Terra Sunder specifically hitting Edgar Markov. Wait, what, what is Edgar Markov's full name? Edgar Markov Bashful Groom or something? Because Edgar Markov was the old card. Edgar Charmed Groom. Okay, there we go. But, yeah. I would want Terra Sunder primarily as a card that would allow me to have a way to remove Edgar if I was the kind of deck that really couldn't handle Edgar just being a grindy value beast. It, I think it would have to be for some specific purpose like that. Urborg Lurgoif. One in a green for a star slash one plus star creature Lurgoif. Kicker blue and or black. As Urborg Lurgoif enters the battlefield, mill three cards for each time I was kicked. Urborg Lurgoif power is equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard, and its toughness is equal to that number plus one. Eh. Eh. I mean, I guess I see what you're trying to do, and it's cute that you waited until Goblank rotated to do it. There are going to be people who want to just play decks with all creatures, and... More power to them. But I have always found creatures to be the most boring type of card in Magic, and that is not for me. What about for Commander? I... This card? I don't feel like... Or, or you probably mean the last card. This card in Commander would just be a creature with big stats, and I think that's irrelevant. Uh, Terra Sunder in Commander? That, that's actually probably pretty reasonable. I mean, I know people play 4-mana Vindicate that exiles, and Terra Sunder is... or 3-mana Vindicate that exiles and costs 3 life. Terra Sunder is 4-mana version of that, but again, Naturalize is... it's Soul Ring. It's not embarrassing. I don't think that it would see play in competitive EDH, but I do think Terra Sunder is not an embarrassing card to have in your green-black deck. Uh, yeah. Lurgoyf. I'm sure people are going to do it. I probably will not. It's an option. Is that an option for reanimator decks? I don't think so. Mill is the worst way you can try to enable reanimator strategies generally. Unless you're going really deep on it. So it's basically Tarmogoyf. Uh, in a sort of cosmic sense, it's basically Tarmogoyf. In a practical sense, it's not really Tarmogoyf at all. Um, but yeah, 
mill is generally not how you want to enable reanimation strategies because it's so inconsistent. It's usually very preferable to have cards that allow you to discard from hand just because it's so much more likely that you have it in your opening hand or a draw step for the turn and you just you basically have more cards that you see that end up in your hand that you can discard so it ends up being more reliable both is an option but we're not really lacking for discard outlets right now for reanimator decks i don't think that's really where i would tend to be pulled to if i was building a reanimator deck okay Yavamaya Iconoclast. One in a green for a 3-2 creature elf with kicker red has trample. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, gains plus one plus one and gains haste until end of turn. So two mana 3-2 trample, not embarrassing. Or three mana for three trample haste. Also not bad. It does die to cut down in response to its ETB. This is true. I feel like if you're going to play a green-red aggro deck that just has good mana, this is probably a two drop that makes the cut the flexibility of being a good two drop and a good three drop is a lot it's very flexible does damage plays cards on curve at multiple points in the game that's what you want your creatures to do when you want to be aggressive with your creatures mm, that's not playable all right, another uncommon that looks unplayable but has a lot of text, so we have to read it. Elvish Hydromancer. Two and a green for a 3-2 creature elf wizard. Kicker, three and a blue. When Elvish Hydromancer enters the battlefield, it was kick create a token that's a top copy of target creature you control. Yes, that was, in fact, actually unplayable, and we wasted our time. Lenore Green Widow. Two and a green for a 4-3 creature spider. Reach trample. Domain, seven and a green. Return Lenore Green Widow from the graveyard to your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. It gains, if this permanent will leave the battlefield, exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. This ability costs one less to activate for each basic land type among lands you control. Uh, it's a three mana, four, three with reach and trample. This is definitely not embarrassing. If you have three land types, it comes back for, I can do math. Five mana? The, it does not have the restriction of activating that domain ability at sorcery speed. That's... That's actually a little appealing. Hmm. So it comes back tapped, so you're not really doing any blocking ambushing, but it does mean that it plays nicely around board wipes. Other than farewell, I guess. There's no way to really avoid a farewell with this thing. But... I mean, yeah, playing around most sorcery speed removal nicely is cool. It's a way to be moderately aggressive while developing card advantage. So basically, that means this card's Bone Crusher, right? I don't think this card is bad. I just think that it is probably conditional on there being an aggressive shell that wants to play Triomes. I am not sold on the idea that that is a particularly viable deck-building plan, but if that deck-building plan isn't as self-defeating as I think it is, then the rest of this looks pretty appealing. Because if you can get three basic land types, I think this card's pretty reasonable. Well, I should probably look at this because I'm sure I'm going to try to jam it at some point. Scout the Wilderness. Two and a green sorcery. Search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. Oh, tapped? Why? If the spell was kicked, create two 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens. Kicker, one and a white. I... Putting it onto the battlefield tap makes this kind of awful. Never mind. We're going to pretend we didn't waste time reading it. The Weather Seed Treaty. Two and a green... For a saga, with read ahead. First chapter, search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, tapped, and then shuffle. All right. All right. Second chapter, create a 1-1 green sapperling creature token. Okay. Third chapter, domain target creature you control gets plus X plus X and gains trample until end of turn where X is the number of basic land types among lands you control. Sure. 
So fix one basic land type for domain, then make a 1-1 one, one the next turn. So close. So yeah, that spider, if you have two triumphs out, it costs three to bring back. But I really don't think that it's a good idea to try to be playing, like, that many tap lands in an aggressive deck. And I don't think the spider is probably very good unless it's in an aggressive deck. Well, maybe that's wrong. Maybe I'm going too hard on the idea of thinking the domain is supposed to be aggressive. Maybe you can somehow build a grindy mid-range domain deck that's built around, like, efficient removal and inherent card advantage from spiders and... That still doesn't sound like a deck that's going to actually overcome the fact that you're just playing a heinously tapped slow mana base. But, I mean, maybe, I guess? I don't know. Anyway, Weather Seed Treaty, if it made the 1-1 one -one on the same turn as it went and go get a land, I'd be, like, kind of interested. But it doesn't, so it seems mostly just too slow to be relevant. Threats Undetected. Two green for a sorcery. Search your library for up to four creature cards with different powers and reveal them. An opponent chooses two of those cards. Shuffle the chosen cards in your library, put the rest into your hand. Seems bad. Mostly. Like, Gifts Ungiven was an instant speed card and still sucked. Until people realized you could cheat and just use it as an entomb. And this isn't an entomb. So mostly it's just very bad sorcery speed divination that gives you your third and fourth best creature in your deck. I, if you put it that way, it's not, like, heinous as far as green divination goes. It's just mostly pretty bad. Like, what green deck with a bunch of creatures wants to play divination well hypothetically you build your deck so that you're guaranteed to get the third and fourth best creatures in any given spot because you can just go get your first second third and fourth quality creature but yeah i like green creature decks don't tend to be decks that are interested in playing divination they tend to be decks that are interested in playing a creature that attacks Seems bad. Next up, Defiler of Vigor. Three green green for a 6-6 six, six creature Phyrexian Worm. Trample. As an additional cost to cast green permanent spells, you may pay two life. Those spells cost green less to cast. If you pay life this way, this effect reduces only the amount of green mana you pay. Whenever you cast a green permanent spell, put a plus plus one counter on each creature you control. I really thought that was going to say target creature you control. Oh, okay, well. It's a little strange how much better this Defiler is than every other single Defiler by a lot. Like, if it was target... Put a plus plus one counter on target creature you control, it would still probably be the best Defiler. <laughs> and this is considerably better than that. It also puts counters on itself. Jeez. Uh, yeah, so, okay. Five mana, six, six trampler is not embarrassing. The fact that you can play this and then immediately play a one drop. Oh, you can, like, play four copies of the two mana, or the one mana, two, one wolf that also enters with a counter. And then just on turn five, play Defiler, immediately play that one drop, put a counter on everything. Gives you a 5-mana 7-7 seven, seven, and a 1-mana 3-2 and a plus-1-plus-1 one, plus one counter on every other creature that's still in play. That seems good. Permanent 2, not even creature. I guess, do we have any other permanents that are green that are likely to be useful for that? I mean, just it being creature is good enough, but we don't have any green enchantments or artifacts that I can think of, do we? At least not in standard. I guess you could hypothetically view this for formats older than standard, but I don't think this is likely to be playable in formats older than standard. Five minutes a lot. 
Ranger class. Ranger class is rotating. Courier's briefcase. That exists. Yeah, okay. That might fit with Defiler of Vigor. Yeah. Jugan defends the temple. I suppose that card isn't, like, completely unplayable. Fight rigging. That's... Yeah, fight rigging just came out of the newest set. That's potentially an interesting one, yeah. Yeah, Cemetery Prowler with this also gets interesting, because then you get to start playing your two drops for free. Although at that point, I don't know how many two drops you're likely to have. Just because Cemetery Prowler probably meant you dropped all of your creatures. Oh, okay, so I guess you go turn three Cemetery Prowler, turn four Defiler of Vigor, play all your two drops and one drops. Okay, no, that, that actually, that's... That's not an entirely uninteresting combo at all. Yeah, Fight Rigging procs off this, and happens to be a way to go find this. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this seems pretty good. I think that Defiler of Vigor still kind of incentivizes you to go really heavy on the one and two drops. So, you're like, you're still pretty built into being a linear aggressive deck, but this is a cool top end for a relatively linear aggressive deck. Problem is when this comes down, do you even need the discount anymore? I don't know. I mean, the discount helping you potentially get a couple of the immediate triggers might be interesting, but yeah, there is the concern that maybe when you play Defiler of Vigor, you might be empty-handed at that point. Unclear. Also concerning that you are now playing a mono green deck that no longer has creature lands of any kind that I'm aware of. What creature lands do we still have, actually? But, like, that sounds like a deck that is inherently very weak to your opponent just going, I'm gonna play board wipe now. No creature lands. Oh. Oh, that feels so good. You're telling me I don't have to be just hyper-conscientious about how much instant speed removal spell I'm playing? Oh... Do we really not have any, like, the janky colorless ones? Future standard. Type line land. Search. I'm going to say that I'm not willing to call Hostile Hostile a real creature land. Soken's on closer to a real creature land, but not quite. No creature lands. I kind of love it. The problem with playing Defiler of Vigor in a tokens deck with, like, Broker's Ascendancy is then you're playing with a much more significant percentage of your deck that no longer triggers Defiler of Vigor. The new three mana Lily and no creature lands, maybe Super Friends decks will rise to that again. Unfortunately, we don't actually have any good Planeswalkers either, so I don't suspect Super Friends is going to have too much to work with. I, I, do we have literally any good Planeswalkers? We have Wandering Emperor. That's I'm willing to call Wandering Emperor a good Planeswalker. I would even call Elspeth Resplendent probably an okay Planeswalker, bordering on good. Chandra Dash to Kill is good in mono red. Soaring the Mirthless is a good card. Alright, so we have Soaring the Mirthless, Wandering Emperor, Teferi Slows the Sunset. Did anybody ever figure out if Renin 7 was a good card without Chariot? My question is, is this significantly better than Avaru Caretaker? Is Defiler a figure? I think very yes. The stat line on the creature and costing one mana less is a really big deal. Because, like... It, Defiler of Vigor is inherently a card that is an aggressive card. And Avabrook Caretaker costs a little bit too much mana to actually be a card that gets played in aggressive decks. No, no one has ever played Ren without Chariot. That's kind of what I thought. Ren combo with Liliana. Is, d does it? Does it? Hmm. All right. So we have, like, four good Planeswalkers, and they're all in Esper. That's something. Although your Esper mana base isn't particularly good. The pluses synergize? 
Oh, okay. Ren puts a bunch of bad cards in your hand so you can discard the bad cards to Liliana. I see where we're going. I can't even entirely disagree with you. That is technically true. With Domain, the plus on Ren could be more powerful. Maybe? I mean, if you can't have Domain active by turn 5, or, well, turn 6, realistically, then your deck probably can't function as a Domain deck regardless. And my fundamental concern with Domain remains that I don't see how you can get to enough domain to play a mid-range deck without playing, like, eight triomes, and I'm skeptical of decks playing eight triomes and being able to curve out. Next up, Silverback Elder. Two green, green, green. So five mana total for a 5-7 creature ape shaman. Whenever you cast a creature spell, choose one. Destroy a target artifact or enchantment. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may put a land card from among them onto the battlefield tapped with the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Or you gain four life. Uh, I thought one of those was going to be like more card advantage than it actually was. Mostly this is just five mana big. It's kind of difficult for me to imagine this ever seeing play when you could play a Defiler of Vigor instead. That has better aggressive stats and better abilities. Yeah, so I can definitely imagine building a domain deck that has the full domain active. I am deeply uncertain that the benefits of having full domain ends up ever being worth the cost of what you do to your mana base to make that domain obtainable. Especially because of the percentage of time where you just don't draw a domain payoff and you still have to deal with the downside of having all the triomes. I don't know. It's uncertain. Uncertain. All right, here's the thing. Herd Migration. Six and a green for a sorcery. Domain. Create a 3-3 three, three green beast creature token for each basic land type among lands you control. One and a green. Discard Herd Migration. Search your library for basic land card. Reveal it. Put into your hand. Then shuffle. You gain three life. If you view this as an uncounterable... Tutor up a basic, gain three life. It's kind of interesting. Seven mana is a lot, though. Like, a lot, a lot. And you're spending your early turn just kind of spinning your wheels, gaining life and filtering, but if my complaint about domain decks is that you're playing a mana base that's inherently slow... This is a card that takes that complaint and continues running with it down the field. If we're going to be a slow deck, we're going to be the slowest deck to ever existed. Good card for limited? I don't even know if I think this is a good card. Well, I don't know what domain enablers there are in limited. I think you need to have four domain before this card ever becomes interesting to hardcast, and it's not particularly interesting to cycle in limited. I mean, it's not bad, but it's worse than just like a random two drop with decent stats. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of want to like it, but I don't really think that it addresses the problems that I have with Domain. Play it through Arcane Bombardment, I guess? But it's... I, I've played some Arcane Bombardment decks. You end up with a lot of stuff in your graveyard. It is difficult to play Arcane Bombardment in a way that reliably hits big spells. The World Spell, 5 green green for a saga with read ahead. First chapter and second chapter, look at the top 7 cards of your library. You may reveal a non-saga permanent card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Third chapter, put up to 2 non-saga permanent cards from your hand onto the battlefield. Mm. Mm. This does not seem like the kind of effect that is doing enough for seven mana. Yeah, hypothetically, with like Soul Tile Ultimatum, he could put a World Spell into play and then put two spells into play off a of World Spell from your hand. So maybe there's some silly combo here somewhere. But yeah, played fairly, this seems too slow and not high enough impact for seven mana. 
which means we are at the multicolored cards. Yay!